All right, so in this video, I'm going to be going over the practice 4.1 to 4.3 quiz. The first question is asking me what the degree, type, degree, and leading coefficient of this function are. So the first thing I need to know is not before I even find out my type, I need to know what my degree is. The degree is the highest exponent any of the variables have. So if I take a look, my highest exponent here is 3. So that would make my um, polynomial a degree 3. The word that goes with 3 is cubic. That is from my type. The matching ones are if I have no x, then it would be a constant. If I have an x and the exponent is 1, it would be linear. If I have an x and the exponent is 2, it is quadratic. If the highest exponent is 3, it's cubic. If the highest exponent is 4, it's quartic. And if the highest exponent is 5, it's quintic. My leading coefficient is the number out front, so I have a negative 3 here. My leading coefficient would be negative 3. This one wants me to graph the function and then describe the end behavior. So what I want to do for this problem is I want to go ahead and go to Desmos. And then I want to go ahead and type in that equation. Oops. Okay, so this is what my graph ends up looking like. Um, so the way we write our answer is, I'm going to go to the equation editor, so I click the three dots and the square root of x to get into the equation editor, and then I'm going to type as x, and then I want to go to an arrow, and I want the arrow pointing to the right, and then I'm going to have negative, and then go to miscellaneous, infinity. So this phrasing right here means as I go to the left side of my graph, if I look at my left side of the graph, the graph keeps going down. So then I would write comma f of x, and then I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to have that arrow, and I'm going to go to negative infinity. Um, then I want to do, I'm going to insert that. I'm going to do the same thing for the right side. So to go for the right side, I want to do the equation editor, and I'm going to write as x. And then I'm going to have that arrow. So as x goes to this time positive infinity for positive right side, I mean for po for the right side, and then my graph f of x. So if I look at this on the right side, that graph keeps going up forever. So up is also positive infinity. Up and right are positive infinity. Down and left use negative infinity. So here I'm going to insert this. Next question. It says, given this graph, I want to write all the intervals where the function is increasing and then all of the intervals where the function is decreasing. So really quickly, I am going to do this so I can write on it. What, when it's increasing, this is where it has a positive slope. And so I want to write the areas where it has a positive slope. Notice it starts on the left side and it stops at this x value of negative 1. So I have negative infinity to negative 1 for my first increasing set. And then my second increasing set, this point is 0, 0. So this x value, we only care about x values when we're writing our increasing and decreasing. So I have 0 to the other x value, which is 1. Then I want to do the same thing for decreasing. Let's do green. So decreasing has a negative slope. So I want to write those for my decreasing. I have it between this x value of negative 1 and this x value of 0. And then it starts decreasing again at the positive 1 to positive infinity. So then what I want to do is I just want to go ahead and write these in as my answer. What was the other one? Zero to one. I also need a label that this one is increasing. I forgot to do that. And then I also want to label that the next set I'm going to write is my decreasing. And that one was between negative one and zero. And the other one is 1 infinity. Okay, 
Moving on, this one wants me to find f of x plus g of x. So what I'm doing on this one is I want to add like terms. So um, I'm looking for my exponents to have the same value. This one is negative 3x to the fourth. There is nothing else with that. This one is just 3x cubed. And I'm adding, if I didn't write over that, I would be able to see. Oops. Okay, so this is a negative 2 and a negative 7 that I'm adding together. It's going to give me negative 9x squared. And then I have negative 8 and positive 2, which gives me negative 6. So um, if you want to write your work on paper and then upload a photo, you can. Um, you would do so by clicking the three dots again, and then this time clicking the photo of the landscape, and then you have to just find the photo on your computer. But I wrote this, so this was 3x to the fourth, oops, plus 3x cubed, and then what was the rest of it? It was negative 3x to the fourth. Minus 9x squared, minus 6. This one wants me to subtract, so what I want to do here is I first want to actually okay. So what I want to do is I want to, because I'm subtracting the g of x, that means I want to go through and change all of those signs to be opposite because it changes when you distribute a negative. Then I want to go ahead and combine like terms. So I have a negative 7x cubed and a positive 3x cubed. That gives me negative 4x cubed. Then I have a negative 2x squared and a positive 4x squared, which gives me positive 2x squared. I only have this negative 7x. And then I have this negative 1 and positive 4, which add to positive 3. So my answer here. negative 4x cubed plus 2x squared minus 7x plus 3. Okay, this one wants me to evaluate the function when x equals negative 4. So what I'm going to do is I am going to plug in negative 4 into this equation. So for everywhere there's an x, I'm going to replace it with a negative 4. So I'm going to have 3 times negative 4 cubed minus 3 times negative 4 squared minus negative 4 minus 4. And I know I'm plugging in negative 4 because that's what it tells me. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to type in my work for this problem. Remember, you could also feel free to type this in, or take a photo and do it by hand. Okay, then what I could do next is I can go to Desmos and I can just type this in for the equation editor part and it will actually go ahead and solve it for me. Which gets me negative 240. Okay. Next one wants me to find the product of these two polynomials. I want to multiply them together. I'm going to use the box method, and I am going to do this by hand. So I want to insert a table. I have one, two, three, four, and a f uh, one on that side. So I am going to make it one larger than I need in each direction. So I'm going to type in each term. So I have 7x cubed here, negative 6x squared here. 5x and negative 8. And then from my other one, I have negative 5x squared. So all of these came from the equations I was given. This negative 5x squared came from f of x. And all of these ones on the top came from g of x. So 
or I'm just going to make these bold so they look different. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply inside each square. So the big numbers get multiplied together and the exponents get added. I have negative 5 times 7, which is going to give me negative 35. 35. And then I add my exponents, which turns into 5. Then I have negative 6x squared times negative 5x squared, which is going to turn into positive 30x to the 4th. Over here I have positive 5x times negative 5x squared, which gives me negative 25x cubed. And negative 8 times negative 5x squared, which gives me positive 40x squared. So then what I'm going to do is I am going to write my equation. I can move this so I can see what I wrote at any time. So I have negative 35x to the 5th. And then plus 30x to the 4th. minus 25x cubed and plus 40x squared. Okay. Over here, this one again wants me to find the product, but oh, it tells me in the directions that I'm multiplying the same thing twice. So I am going to do this again by the table method. I have x and negative 5, and over here I have x and negative 5. I am just so it's clear that these ones are what I'm starting with. I'm going to bold those. In each square, I again want to multiply. x times x gives me x squared. x times negative 5 gives me negative 5x. Negative 5 times x gives me negative 5x. And negative 5 times negative 5 gives me positive 25. So what I want to do is I want to combine like terms when I add. I have x squared. Um, and then I have negative 5x plus negative 5x, which is going to give me negative 10x. And then I just have that 25 left over at the end. Okay. This one wants me to use synthetic division. I can do this one by using a table. I am going to want 1, 2, 3. I want 4 over... 3 down. So what I want to do when I'm using synthetic division is I just want to write the coefficients out front. So I have 2, 3, and 7. If I was missing any of these, and by missing I mean the exponents count down, and I would be missing one of the counting downs of my exponents. Um, then what I want to do is the part that I'm dividing by, this minus 2, I'm going to change it to be a positive 2. And then I bring this first 2 down. And I multiply by that 2 I have. So 2 times 2 gives me 4. It goes in the next open spot. 3 plus 4 gives me 7. 2 times 7 gives me 14. And 7 plus 14 gives me 21. So the way I would write this answer is it would be 2x plus 7. Because I go ahead and I do 1 less than my exponent of the number I started off with. And then I'm going to have a fraction answer. 21 over x minus 2. This was the part that I was dividing by. So if I wanted to format this nicely, let me go into the equation editor. So I have 2x plus 7 plus 14 over x minus 2. So this is the 14. It should have been 21. So these are the same things, just written in two different ways. This one wants me to use long division, so I will do this one. This would be an example of where I would do it on my piece of paper and take a photo and upload it. So when I'm doing long division, I write my number out. Can I extend my screen here? Nope. So I have, no, nope, I don't want to write that all the way at the top. 3x cubed minus 2x squared. This is one where I'm missing my x term, so I'm going to have plus 0x plus 7. And then I am dividing by x minus 2. So what I want to do is I want to make this x match this 3x cubed so I can cancel them out. x needs to be multiplied by 3x squared to turn into 3x cubed. So off to the side I'm going to do my work. 3x squared times x gives me 3x cubed. 3x squared times negative 2 gives me negative 6x. So what I want to do is when I write them over here, I change those signs.
6x squared. And I add down. The 3x's cancel out, and negative 2x squared plus 6x squared gives us 4x squared. And I want to write what I multiplied by up on top. Then again, I'm going to do the same thing. I need to turn x into 4x squared, so I'm just multiplying by 4x. Just going to give me 4x squared minus 8x. So again, I want to write them over here and change those signs. gives me 8x plus 7. And I want to write what I multiplied by up top. So to turn x into 8x, I need to multiply by 8, which gives me 8x minus 16. So I change those signs, and which gives me 23. So my answer would be 3x squared plus 4x plus 8, and then I have this remainder of that 23, so it's going to be plus 23 over the part I was dividing by, x minus 2. That's not a nice looking 2. Okay, so I will go ahead and I would, if I was doing this, I would upload a photo and then I would box my answer before I upload my photo. So I'm just going to write this so you can see what it is. Like so. Okay, and the last one says I can use any method to obtain the quotient and remainder. I am going to use synthetic division because personally I like it a lot better than I like long division. So this one I am again going to do a table. I have one, two, three, four terms, so I'm going to go out five boxes. And long division has me going down three. Then I write my coefficients. So the number out in front of x cubed is just a one. Negative 13, 52, 60. Then the sign on that two in the parentheses after the, div um, the divisor, uh, it changes signs to be a positive two. I want to bring down this one. I have 1 times 2, which gives me 2. Negative 13 plus 2, which gives me a negative 11. Negative 11 times 2 gives me negative 22. 52 minus 22 gives me 30. 30 times 2 gives me... Uh, I wrote one of these wrong. The 60. Should have been a negative. Negative 60 plus 60 gives me a 0. So then my final answer here, because I have a 0, means I don't have a remainder. And then I want to go ahead and type these in. So I'm going to go one exponent less than I started. So x squared and then minus 11x plus 30. And that would be my final answer here.